بسم الله نبدأ وعلى بركة الله نبدأ هذه الجلسة والتي تحمل عنوان الإشكالية والقيم في قضايا الهوية في دول الخليج العربي وتحدياتها وعندما نتكلم عن الهوية يتبادر إلى الذهن ما هو الإطار الذي يحدد ثوابت الهوية لكي نضع إطارا نستطيع المناقشة فيه فأنا أعتبر أو, أو يتبادر إلى الذهن أن الثوابت التي تحدد الهوية هي بمثابة البصمة البصمة التي تميز مجتمع عن آخر البصمة التي تميز أمة عن أخرى أو البصمة التي تميز فرد عن آخر دون أن يفقد ثوابت واستمرار بصمته بالرغم بأنه يتغير فيه أشياء وأشياء كثيرة عبر مراحل عمره وتطورات في فكره و دون أن يفقد هذه الثوابت سوف نتطرق في هذه الجلسة أو نسمع إلى الباحثين والمتحدثين في هذا الموضوع والذين سوف يثرون هذه الجلسة ونبتدئ مع الدكتور يعقوب الكندري هو أستاذ في قسم الاجتماع والأنثروبولوجيا بجامعة الكويت ورئيس تحرير مجلة حوليات الأداب والعلوم الاجتماعية حاصل على شهادة الدكتوراه في الأنثروبولوجيا من جامعة أوهايو في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية تولى مناصب عدة إذ عمل عميدا لكلية العلوم الاجتماعية بجامعة الكويت ومديرا لمركز دراسات الخليج والجزيرة العربية ورئيسا لتحرير لمجلة دراسات الخليج والجزيرة العربية سوف يكون لكل متحدث 15 دقيقة ونفتح مجال المداخلات والمناقشة بعد الانتهاء من السماع للمتحدثين الرئيسيين تفضل دكتور اللهم رحيم شكرا للأخت الرئيسة يعني أنا إذا سمحتي لي بس أنتقل هناك حتى يعني أفضل أعتقد من أنه يشوف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شكرا للأخت الرئيسة سوف أتحدث باختصار وبشكل عاجل على موضوع أو دراسة ميدانية قمت بإعدادها وهي للأمانة دراسة ميدانية مشتقة من دراسة أكبر قمنا فيها على المجتمع الكويتي تتحدث عن مع تغيير بعض العنوان بعض الكلمات في العنوان عن الهوية الوطنية في مواجهة الهوية الفئوية وعلاقتها بقيم المواطنة والانتماء داخل المجتمع الكويتي وقد يكون مفهوم الهوية غير الذي تم مناقشته يعني ليس ليس بمختلفة لكن يختلف بأن سوف نتحدث عن الهوية المحلية من خلال هويات فئوية داخل المجتمع الكويتي ليس لها علاقة بالعمالة الوافدة إنما الهويات الفرعية داخل المجتمع الكويتي عندما تحدث عن هذا الموضوع وهو ينعكس بشكل مباشر أيضا حتى على بقية دول الخليج العربي وممكن أن نسقطها على بقية دول مجلس التعاون الخليج العربي بشكل باختلاف نسبي طبعا الدراسة راح أتكلم عن ستة محاور أو ستة قضايا حتى تكون معي بالصورة وشي راح أتكلم عن هدف الدراسة ثم نتحدث عن المفاهيم ثم أسئلة الدراسة ثم منهجيتها فنتائجها فخلاصة عامة بشكل عام راح أدخل بالموضوع مباشرة شنو تهدف هذه الدراسة الميدانية اللي مثل ما قلت لكم عنها تهدف إلى تحديد مؤشر كمي نحاول أن نسعى نقف على مؤشر كمي للهوية الوطنية لدى عينة مبحوثة اعتمدنا عليها في مقابل وجود هويات فرعية أو هويات فئوية أخرى داخل المجتمع الكويتي وكذلك درجة ومستوى الشعور بهذه الهوية إن كانت هي عالية أو متوسطة أو منخفضة أيضا سوف يعني هدف الآخر لهذه الدراسة الكشف عن علاقة التمسك بمشاعر الهوية الوطنية بقيم الانتماء والمواطنة اللي اعتمدنا من خلالها على مقاييس سوف أتحدث عنها بعد قليل المفاهيم ما بيعدش كثير بالمفاهيم لأن يمكن الجلسة الصباحية كانت تتحدث عن بعض المفاهيم أيضا وكثير منا يفهم يعرف هذه المفاهيم راح أمر عليها بشكل عاجل حتى أدخل في نتائج الدراسة الميدانية لما نتحدث عن العلوم الاجتماعية دائما المفاهيم في العلوم الاجتماعية هي مفاهيم لا نستطيع أن نقول عنها مفاهيم ثابتة إنما هي وليس هناك مفهوم جامع مانع في العلوم الاجتماعية هناك تداخل ما بين مفاهيم هوية وطنية هوية <تصفيق> 
the national uh, identity and other uh, concepts. So we will talk about it and say what do we mean by these different types of identity. The identity is to distinguish and to know how different we are from another. So there are similarities and differences when we compare ourselves to others. There is individual uh, identity and social for tribe, society, and there is a social identity which gathers all these identities. Uh, also, the nationalism is taken from nation uh, loyalty and connection with the uh, land and uh, traditions, so it is more uh, sentimental. The nation, uh, national identity gathers a group of uh, people who are proud of belonging uh, to that uh, nation. So we said there are differences and similarities. In this study, and as a definition, procedural uh, uh, definition, we adopted a foreign one, but we translated it and adapted it to cultural Kuwaiti culture. It is to be proud of the uh, uh, local product through a criteria which I will mention quickly later. The, the uh, sense of believe, uh, belonging is linked to uh, behavior which uh, is in line with it. Uh, the uh, citizenship uh, is wider than uh, uh, national and it is wider than it's a relationship between the in individuals and between the individual and the group. And uh, there are rights and uh, duties which are linked to the citizenship. In addition to that is uh, uh, belonging and loyalty. And uh, it is feeling one social identity. And we could not achieve that citizenship without uh, these uh, criteria and uh, conditions. So it, it has a sentimental dimension and a behavioral dimension so that people that they belong to the same entity and identity. The values linked to citizenship and uh, this has something to do also with the procedure, which is the uh, tolerance, uh, cooperation. There are also economic values, this, uh, like uh, keeping uh, uh, wealth and uh, reasoning or reasonable uh, consumption and also religious uh, values uh, like uh, respecting the other uh, although he belongs to another region and also aesthetical uh, uh, values like keeping uh, the streets clean etc and also legal uh, values like uh, uh, respecting laws What are the indicators uh, for the uh, uh, group uh, identities? The national uh, identity in comparison with other smaller identities of certain groups So there are three bases. 
How do we feel the uh, identity about uh, coordination, uh, being proud of uh, heritage? Are there differences between uh, men and women? Are there differences between the uh, individual identity and to determine uh, the uh, d level of uh, nationalism or uh, citizenship? Are there, is there any relation with uh, the sentimental uh, aspect? These questions, main questions of the study without getting into the uh, method of uh, the study. It is taken from a wider uh, or more important study. The group is from uh, over 17 years from various uh, Kuwaiti areas, four criterias. Two of them were uh, by myself, and there is a criteria which was translated, and uh, the criteria of the individual identity, and uh, this was necessary to determine the different types of uh, identities. It is uh, the rotor criteria, which is uh, f completing a, a sentence where a part is missing. If I am uh, a nationalist, uh, what is my job? Uh, what, uh, and uh, the criteria of the individual and the belonging, all these criteria uh, went through these six criteria. We also relied on uh, statistics, descriptive statistics, and many other uh, statistic criteria. The results of uh, the study, of the survey, it clarified, as you see, that 68.5% uh, who uh, w describe themselves by being a nationalist. I am a Kuwaiti. So they spoke directly about being Kuwaiti. The Islamic uh, identity is uh, for 8.6 percent. The problem is the uh, tribal and uh, <coughs> sectarian also identity, 11%. When we put the criteria, statistical criteria, for the national identity, between uh, uh, men and women, you notice that the uh, women are uh, uh, in a higher number. Uh, their feeling of belonging to uh, their uh, country or their nation. And there is an explanation why is it uh, this way. For uh, Islamic, uh, less women and also for tribal and uh, sectarian also uh, women are less because when uh, the participation into the political life uh, uh, they are uh, they have a stronger feeling of uh, uh, nationalism the feelings in the individual uh, of national identity 20% it was high uh, 20, 62 percent it was average and 17.3 percent it was low 
and this is uh, a statistical criteria which we used. And uh, this also is called the limits of a study in order to determine if it is high or low or medium. The nation, national identity, uh, we notice that uh, the uh, women are uh, of a higher number. One of the most uh, results of uh, the uh, survey is that those who said that they were a nation of, of a national identity also are uh, less in relation with the citizenship and uh, the relation with these dimensions. So who said that he is a nationalist was first in the feeling of bil belonging in the four dimensions. As for the uh, political values and aesthetical, the, uh, we find that the Islamist, uh, Islamic identity are more than the others. Therefore, the political is linked to the uh, definite determination of Islamic identity. Between the national identity and the values of belonging and citizenship. So if you are more uh, uh, feeling of a more national identity and being proud of uh, the uh, local product, and uh, it is clear that there are technical indicators that uh, are not satisfactory which uh, is related to uh, implementing uh, programs for uh, achieving national, uh, there should be uh, uh, law and uh, transparency and we cannot uh, claim national identity, but uh, uh, not respect the others. Thank you. Thank you, uh, doctor, for sticking to the time. It is uh, hard to uh, synchronize between uh, the elements which allow to determine the identity. So belonging uh, and these are concepts which are interconnected uh, and we should uh, deter define uh, fixed uh, uh, aspects so it is the impact of uh, uh, the fingerprint of uh, uh, every society so we have another researcher this second session, Maryam Al Hamadi, who is a teacher of uh, modern and uh, ancient uh, history in Qatar University. She specialized in uh, political uh, uh, history. She has many uh, studies and researches. You have the floor, uh, Professor Miriam. The previous uh, speakers uh, spoke about uh, different uh, studies, so I'm not going to uh, proceed the same way. Uh, I'm going to focus uh, on uh, one very important aspect, uh, which is a uh, very controversial. Uh, uh, among uh, those uh, who specialize uh, in the field of uh, uh, museums, uh, 
We are gonna expect you into uh, uh, the opening of a new museum in April in Qatar. I'm gonna speak uh, here about the uh, Qatari National Identity in Qatar National Museum. It's expected to be open. So I'm gonna focus uh, here about the structure of uh, the museum, how it reflects uh, the identity of the country, which is, as I said, a controversial issue between uh, uh, a group which wants uh, to show a unique uh, or one uh, identity and another group uh, of uh, specialists uh, who want to portray the diversity of uh, Qatari culture and Qatari identity. This is the problem we have now. The question, can we present uh, Qatari identity as being one and unique or shall we present uh, the uh, national identity with its uh, cultural uh, identity. As Dr. Kendri said, uh, we need to reflect also the uh, cultural uh, identity within uh, Qatari society. So I'm not, uh, uh, I don't want to mean here the uh, Qatari uh, or the different uh, cultures existing in Qatar, which is which are non-Qatari. The question which we can pose uh, here, if we uh, present, if we show the Qatari Qatari has been one unit. Uh, how can this uh, exhibition be accepted uh, by the public? Uh, here we need uh, to define uh, the term of uh, identity and uh, we need to define its uh, importance. Uh, I don't want to go again into that because Dr. Kandari spoke about that uh, earlier and defined this term, uh, but uh, very briefly, uh, identity might be a social uh, identity or personal identity. The issue of uh, identity is uh, very controversial uh, between different uh, specialists uh, with their or in uh, humans uh, humanitarian sciences or uh, social sciences uh, and the political uh, theory uh, the uh, uh, definition of uh, identity is uh, endless uh, we speak about uh, the race uh, the gender uh, general culture and so on these uh, analysis uh, uh, give uh, the identity a lot of uh, uh, different notions in the identity uh, has different uh, specific uh, characteristics uh, in these uh, characteristics uh, are gained uh, either by the or through uh, cultural uh, heritage uh, language uh, uh, the tribe, the region, the social class, uh, nationality, and also the tribal name. When we move uh, from the social identity to the racial identities or the aspects uh, or the components, components of uh, uh, this uh, identity are actually the color, uh, eye color, uh, hair color, uh, uh, weight, maybe the height uh, of the body and so on. And uh, maybe we have a limited number among the population which can be defined according to the uh, uh, racial uh, identity, as I mentioned uh, earlier, with the different uh, char characteristics. Uh, if uh, we want to divide the identity in Qatar, for example, I think uh, the identity can reflect uh, either a social or a racial uh, uh, category. When we talk about uh, social power, we have uh, different uh, tribes, uh, the Arab uh, Arabs, uh, which uh, are left uh, to uh, the Persian uh, area and then came back. Uh, when we speak about uh, the uh, racial uh, issue, racial aspect, uh, we have uh, the Shia, Africans, uh, and so on. So, although we have uh, this uh, controversy and uh, a difference uh, at the level of uh, identity within uh, the Qatari society. We think uh, that this uh, uh, theory is uh, shed a light uh, on the way how society unified uh, in order to uh, 
uh, push back uh, any threat. Uh, when we um, discuss the, the Qatari identity, we find out the nature the, of uh, Qatari society, the unity and the social structure is uh, very strong uh, and uh, also there is uh, another symbiosis between the Qatari society and its uh, government. This is something which we tested, especially during the time of the blockade against Qatar. Because the identity of a Qatari society is a result of different uh, social uh, characteristics. In the context of uh, discussing uh, Qatari uh, identity, I want to uh, underline and focus uh, here about the way Qataris understand themselves as uh, Qataris and how they recognize uh, their identity according to their cultural and historical background. Uh, and uh, how can the uh, upcoming uh, National Museum reflect uh, this uh, diversity in uh, Qatar? It's uh, clear that uh, Qatari society is not uh, suffering uh, from this uh, cultural diversity. Uh, on the opposite of that, uh, I think that this uh, diversity and all these factors uh, made uh, the Qatari society a strong uh, and solid uh, society. If we want to talk about the historical uh, factors and economic uh, factors uh, which uh, established uh, the identity of Qatari society, we find out the, that these uh, aspects uh, need more clarification and need to be detailed and not uh, generalized. Uh, let us uh, to mention some of the components of Qatari identity. The uh, belonging to a society, to a group, uh, is uh, defined according uh, to historical factors. Uh, for example, uh, the movement uh, of uh, communities uh, in the GCC area played a major role to shape this uh, identity. For example, these uh, factors uh, created different components in Qatar for uh, national identity, and these uh, components also engender the divisions, uh, deeper divisions uh, within Qatari society, and uh, we cannot deny this uh, uh, fact, the fact uh, of uh, disagreement, uh, differences, and also uh, we have uh, different uh, roots, uh, different uh, sectoral roots, uh, uh, economic and social classes. Uh, to clarify these uh, differences, so we can divide them into three different uh, categories. Uh, the first one, the between the uh, tribes, uh, which have never recognized any political power and any uh, uh, borders. Uh, the only power, the only authority for them was the authority and the power of the tribe. The second uh, category that uh, some uh, researchers uh, uh, call a semi uh, between because uh, during one year they are moving from the coast uh, to the desert. The last uh, part or the last uh, category are. Uh, those uh, communities uh, living uh, along uh, the coast uh, who have never moved uh, to the desert, of course, uh, I said uh, that there are different uh, lifestyles of uh, these uh, three categories. And also their cultural uh, uh, heritage is uh, very different. Uh, the uh, different uh, customs and traditions uh, and lifestyles, all these uh, differences exist existed side by side inside the Qatari society and they have been documented by different researchers. The uh, project managers of uh, Qatar National uh, uh, museum did not uh, speak uh, openly about the way they want to uh, present uh, Qatari uh, uh, identity and the culture in uh, through this uh, museum. Uh, there are a lot of uh, studies uh, uh, which have been uh, conducted uh, and uh, the researchers of uh, who conducted these studies uh, are part of the commissions uh, uh, belonging to the national uh, uh, Museum of Qatar, uh, for example, uh, Jusselin uh, Michel, uh, in one of uh, her paper under the title, We Are All Qataris, 
she explained uh, how the state of Qatar functions, uh, how the Qatar is uh, marketing uh, different uh, symbols uh, in order to uh, reduce uh, social uh, discrepancies, in order to shape uh, a unique and homogeneous uh, Qatari identity, and uh, which is uh, actually uh, reflected in the second uh, category I mentioned uh, earlier, the group communities uh, which uh, have been moving from the coast to the desert and uh, uh, backwards. Uh, Michel uh, relied uh, on uh, around uh, 20,000 uh, photos and there was a Qatari mission in 1959. Uh, this uh, researcher's mission uh, documented that a lifestyle in Qatar and uh, they say that uh, Qatar is characterized by different uh, identities, uh, the three categories I mentioned uh, earlier. Therefore, I think uh, the uh, proposal uh, provided uh, by these uh, researchers to go forward, there is a need uh, to present uh, the full screen, uh, the full scope of uh, Qatari history, and uh, we need uh, to show all of the uh, historical evidence, and we should not uh, uh, reinvent a new identity for Qatari society. We should also uh, uh, recall and uh, remind the uh, structure of this uh, society uh, back uh, in history. We had a lot of uh, Arabs uh, who migrated uh, from the desert to the coast uh, or uh, uh, vice versa, and some uh, left uh, even Qatar and then came back at a later uh, time in order to uh, contribute in the development of uh, the country. So these migrations, these movements uh, were very important, uh, and they, of course, uh, resulted in different uh, uh, views in Qatar, you have one minute uh, left. The most important uh, question in this uh, regard, uh, with the existence of this uh, uh, orientation, and uh, we know that uh, we want to focus uh, on one identity, Qatar is adopting also globalization. What is the strategy adopted uh, by Qatar? What are the plans of Qatar to safeguard its uh, own identity? If we want to talk about uh, museums uh, in GCC countries, uh, the uh, establishment of uh, museums uh, started uh, after the uh, independence uh, from uh, Great uh, Britain and uh, opening uh, museums uh, was uh, a way uh, to show that the region had uh, a history even before the uh, Ottoman uh, Empire uh, came to the region uh, and therefore uh, some of the museums uh, had a political message uh, and uh, their existence uh, since the 70s and now is actually to give a legitimacy uh, to the ruling families in the uh, region. And there is also another deeper aspect, uh, the history of uh, museums in the whole world. Uh, and if we compare it uh, to GCC, GCC countries are using na the term national museum, but in other countries uh, the names of museums uh, are uh, quite uh, different. They are not uh, adopting this uh, uh, term of national museum. So that started in the region here in the 70s, uh, as I said, to uh, give legitimacy to these institutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are running out of time. Thank you. We are running out of time, uh, Dr. Mariam. <coughs> it's not uh, true for us uh, to be uh, uh, unified uh, and uh, uh, linked and connected uh, nation. It's not true and it's not uh, right uh, to uh, dismiss parts of our uh, history and parts of our uh, identity. I can say that the uh, economic uh, crisis that the GCC uh, area faced uh, reflects that there is uh, a great uh, unity and uh, between uh, the uh, communities, uh, and we saw that uh, clearly after the blockade. So we saw uh, that uh, many Qataris even changed uh, the names of their tribes by the name of uh, Qatar. We on the social media, 
many Qataris changed the name of uh, their tribe. So they started calling themselves Khalid al from uh, Qatari, uh, Noor al Qatari, Tawfiq uh, Qatari, and so on. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for this uh, presentation about the Qatari uh, identity. <coughs> and we have the third paper with Mr. Mubarak Al Hamadani from uh, Oman, the uh, advisory council in uh, Oman about the political transformation and uh, it is focused on democracy and uh, the political philosophy as well as the uh, you have 15 years uh, 15 minutes for your presentation your floor is yours first of all uh, good afternoon I am uh, very happy to be part of this uh, event, important event. I will talk about uh, uh, a concept which was uh, discussed during the first uh, s session about the tribe and the tribalism. Dr. Muhammad Armehi said, that right, um, many writings uh, about uh, the society in the Gulf, but if he was talking about Kuwait, for the problem in uh, uh, Oman is bigger. We are still uh, uh, focusing or uh, being interested only in historical uh, publications. So most of the uh, publications or uh, uh, writings are about history uh, rather than in uh, social science. Therefore, we have to deal with the tribe as it was uh, dis defined by Richard Tail that it is a uh, intellectual uh, position or uh, uh, theme as opposed to the uh, state concept. Uh, I based my thought on the fact that it is wrong to think that uh, the uh, blood connections might uh, disappear uh, uh, in a modern society or modern state. Why are we uh, talking about tribe in Oman? I think that uh, there is a historical uh, uh, speech uh, uh, or political history uh, for the tribe in uh, Oman but it is more uh, related to the socio-political uh, aspect. If we think that the tribe is between uh, history, uh, politic, politics, and uh, uh, society, I think we should uh, know how this uh, entity is made and how does it uh, interact uh, uh, with uh, the other components in the state and how does it serve the equality. So we based our paper on uh, uh, certain givings or suppositions There is Abdullah Hamoud also was saying that we, we have to study the tribe not as a distinct aspect, but there are also some other studies 
that uh, re religion and the family are more important. So all these ideas, I will try to evaluate them. There are also many uh, starting points. The first one is that the tribe is not just a link, but it is a mental organization, uh, social. The second starting point is that in the Gulf uh, countries and in the Middle East in general, and despite all the changes, the tribe is still uh, uh, present in uh, the minds of uh, uh, people. For Oman, it is a special case because the society was existing before the state and there is interaction between the tribe and uh, the state and maybe the tribe of Busaida uh, is uh, the uh, oldest in this regard. With the new, the modern uh, state in Qatar by Sultan al Qaboos, I consider that the procedures which were taken, uh, that the state is trying to dismantle the tribe, but there were other uh, uh, logos like, uh, or slogans like uh, development and uh, people were trying to reduce the influence or the impact of uh, a tribe. Uh, Sultan uh, Kabus uh, was talking about uh, including or the participation of all social categories in the development plan or in the development action. And I discussed uh, this uh, in uh, the paper the uh, demo democratic uh, g uh, movement in Iraq was affected, also was influenced, and uh, we had to think about the, the role of the tribe in the democratic process. The other title for the modern uh, state in Qatar is uh, the uh, state which uh, includes all social categories, I think that it was a wise choice by the state. We can also talk about the uh, uh, Mind Institute. Uh, some people accuse the uh, state or the government of uh, uh, acting, uh, being late in acting uh, towards achieving those objectives to get uh, straightly or directly in this approach. Uh, this study is based on experts' uh, opinions who are specialized. So I chose them uh, from the disciplines which are uh, related uh, to our uh, subject. And these uh, specialties are uh, closer to the studies about uh, tribes, especially those who mention the tribes in their thesis. When we discussed uh, the tribe in Oman, the main question was the influence of the uh, tribal element uh, in the institutions of the state and we uh, were saying that uh, the uh, legal, uh, the law uh, developing development in, uh, in Oman was still influenced by the tribes system. We also talk about uh, the impact on the government uh, uh, policies and uh, also the role of the tribe in the social horizon. 
I would like to mention some of uh, the uh, procedures which I consider European. Forty percent think that uh, the state in Oman managed to reduce the influence of the tribal system in the in the country, and 30% uh, think that uh, the society has moved to a more uh, civili civilized uh, uh, society. 38% uh, agree on the fact that on the belonging to a tribe is very important. 42% see that belonging to a tribe also is the cause of uh, corruption and uh, that uh, the tribal system is uh, affecting the uh, institutions in the uh, state and the participation in the political uh, uh, procedure like elections and that belonging to a tribe might be a source of uh, having uh, a better position in the political scheme in the country. Maybe the uh, 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 conclusion is that uh, uh, the efforts of the state to uh, reduce the role of tribe succeeded uh, partially, but there are many important points. May, one of the main issues is, is that the influence uh, of the tribal uh, element in uh, for the candidates uh, to a political role uh, in Oman, and also the nomination or appointments in the uh, political uh, uh, jobs or positions. The problem of uh, tribe and dealing with tribe is that uh, however we try to uh, adopt a scientific approach in many countries, Arab countries, you know that uh, this minister uh, uh, has that position because he belongs to a tribe, but that was difficult and still is different, uh, difficult to be proved. I think that I took uh, less time, so thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hamadani. You spoke about the role of the tribe, uh, historically speaking, also in politics and also its importance uh, in the social uh, structure. We open uh, now the floor for interventions, contributions, uh, and uh, questions. Uh, how many of you want to take uh, the floor for an intervention or contribution or comment? Uh, four, five, six. So I'll close it at six. My name is Mran uh, Awad, uh, researcher in the Arab uh, Center. I'd like, first of all, to thank uh, all the speakers, uh, our researchers. I have a comment uh, related uh, to the paper of Mr. Hamdani. I have an experience, uh, a study related to Egypt uh, and uh, one of uh, my students uh, was preparing his uh, thesis, uh, PhD thesis, uh, uh, in this regard. So I tried to compare uh, the tribe and clan. There's not too much uh, difference between clan and tribe. There's uh, maybe the same or closer notion, but uh, I think it's very important to make a difference between uh, the tribe and uh, tribalism. So we can go back uh, to history to uh, look at the development of the tribe, but uh, tribalism is different. It's a kind of discourse, it's a, a strategy, 
employed uh, and uh, used uh, by uh, the social actor, social player, to reach uh, his uh, objectives. Uh, but the structure of the tribe uh, and the way we knew it, uh, which uh, so the tribe at the end of the day is different uh, from sectorism. Uh, for example, now we cannot uh, find uh, a specific uh, hierarchy in uh, the GCC countries uh, and uh, no one is taking uh, instructions uh, from uh, the D1. There is a case uh, of uh, sectorism which we need uh, to define, we need to separate it uh, from uh, the tribe uh, and the uh, tribe uh, notion is uh, related uh, to the uh, traditional uh, structures. I wanted to uh, clarify this aspect. Uh, you mentioned the article of uh, Abdullah Hamoudi. Abdullah Hamoudi also has the same uh, opinion and uh, Godri has worked uh, on this topic. Uh, he says that there is no society in the world uh, which uh, we can, which can define itself as clan-based. Uh, the tribe, if you want to separate it, theoretically speaking, and you want to isolate it, it's going to disappear. There will be no meaning for the tribe. That's why it's very important for us to understand the role of the tribe. It's important to understand the rituals and the balance of powers and so the relation and the connection to the uh, um, to the area where the tribe was. Thank you. My question goes to Dr. Yagub al and and Mrs. Uh, al Hind al Maftah. Uh, we were, were in uh, Kuwait in the. Uh, from uh, 1988 uh, and earlier Kuwait was uh, a special country uh, and the leading country and they put an end uh, to this uh, issue of the tribe. Uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, uh, newspapers at that time, Al Watan and Bari Lamanson, but uh, afterwards uh, Kuwait uh, with the uh, parliamentary uh, elections uh, and also the uh, national uh, uh, council. They went back uh, to the notion of tribe and also in Qatar this uh, did not exist, but uh, since 1996 uh, this uh, reappeared again. Uh, that's why any GCC state uh, which puts an end uh, to the tribal uh, difference, uh, they should not uh, encourage any kind of uh, re-encouraging these tribes again or um, refuel in this uh, uh, tribal uh, feeling and tribal tension. Ali Kandri, Kuwait uh, University, I have uh, very, uh, three quick uh, questions, Dr. Yagub. The time of uh, conducting statistics that is very important if you conducted that uh, in 2011. I am sure that uh, would be different uh, if you conduct yourself in 2015. So how do you think that the timing of uh, the statistical study is uh, influential? Mrs. Miriam, thank you so much. Uh, the way you spoke about uh, uh, museums, uh, you said in the 70s, uh, uh, museums were politicized. Uh, is the picture different in 2018? And what is the role uh, nowadays uh, for uh, uh, museums uh, in 2018? Does it uh, or do the uh, museums play a role to shape identity? And is there any difference uh, at the level of uh, Qatari identity before the blockade and after the blockade, Mr. Barak al-Hamdani, question to the 60s and the 70s in Oman and in GCC uh, countries. That was the time of uh, dismantling uh, the tribal structure for political reasons that existed in Kuwait, in KSA, in Oman, and uh, the political uh, objectives uh, were clear, but the uh, 
alternative uh, also was not uh, uh, was the, the alternative is uh, not uh, really the uh, alternative was uh, to reach a consensus uh, which is a political consensus uh, question how do you see the future in this uh, regard and I know that uh, you worked uh, on a study now we are uh, in a uh, time where uh, the thoughts uh, are of modernity are maybe uh, going back and uh, how are you going to deal with uh, Frank Stein who worked uh, many many years uh, so how can you uh, deal with this uh, situation My name is Khalid Al-Haroub from Northwestern University in Qatar Foundation in Qatar. I have uh, three remarks or questions. Dr. Yaqub, the different identities uh, you discussed uh, in Kuwait, uh, there was nothing related uh, to the Arab uh, or uh, GCC. Uh, identity, you spoke about the uh, national identity, you spoke about uh, uh, a state and identity or the post Islamic identity, if you can comment on this, uh, Dr. Mariam. I think one of uh, the components, uh, one of the m fundamental components of uh, Qatari, UAE, and uh, Kuwait, or general uh, GCC identity is the state itself, uh, the national state. Uh, this was the core element, the core component of uh, identity. Before that, there was no national identity. There were maybe tribal identities, but uh, the state is the main actor in this regard, uh, which really established this uh, national or different national identities. And uh, before the establishment of the states, uh, the uh, colonial uh, geographical uh, division and not in uh, which goes back to the UK and so on. So these uh, structure was the foundation for a later national uh, identities which are different uh, w from one another. And sometimes uh, the states uh, establish their own uh, identity. For example, the establishment of uh, USA established uh, the national identity or the U.S. national identity. There was nothing called the uh, USA before uh, this country was founded. And the same uh, applies uh, to the Arab uh, identity. This uh, Arab uh, identity also contributed in shaping the uh, identity in the region. The last remark was that Mr. Mubarak, and this is a very important analysis, I think uh, we need a new reading when we think about uh, dismantling uh, or analyzing rather uh, the tri tribe uh, in uh, GCC area economically, socially, and the culture, I think there is a contradiction between the uh, political uh, regime and the economic aspirations. I mean, all the uh, political regimes uh, here are based uh, on uh, tribal uh, contradiction. Uh, therefore, when we talk about uh, Democratic uh, development uh, and it's uh, fa it's uh, linked uh, actually to this uh, structure, which is a tribal structure. The uh, consultative uh, councils uh, are uh, actually uh, an escalator of democracy. In the but the, the problem you are going the uh, opposite way. You are not uh, going up, but you are going down. So you are taking the opposite direction. Thank you. Nasr Saadi. First question is close to the one asked by Ali Al Kandari. Now to the papers uh, which analyze the identity in the GCC area, they characterized it as a problem, as a failure. If we say that it's really failure, what is the reason of that failure? 
So if we accept that it's a, a failure, can't we say that it's a failure in managing this diversity? Can you please keep the microphone close to you? If you do see. Uh, Mr. Mbarak, uh, you spoke about uh, before the session about the tribe uh, in Oman and its uh, relation. Please keep the microphone close to you. The transformation of the tribe uh, into the civil state. Uh, so, personally, when we analyze the uh, media discourse, uh, there is uh, a willingness to do that, but on the ground, uh, we don't see that in Oman, for example. You can't get uh, an idea without the signature of the sheikh of the, uh, of the tribe uh, and uh, some administrative uh, areas uh, in Oman are uh, are uh, distributed uh, according to the presence of a uh, tribe. So we have uh, uh, regions uh, inhabited by specific uh, tribes uh, and these uh, tribes uh, are under our province. Uh, but because sometimes uh, a specific uh, province uh, has the uh, uh, also a percentage of uh, population is from a specific tribe, so this is a reason that it's uh, even uh, it belongs administratively to another province. Khaled uh, Maftah is my name, uh, academic uh, researcher. First, I'd like to start uh, with Dr. Yaqub. Uh, you mentioned uh, that it's uh, difficult uh, to. So the Arabization in our field of study, you said that it's uh, tough. Uh, this uh, makes me think of one of the movies uh, of the Egyptian star Adel Imam. I think it's a uh, really big uh, problematic uh, to Arabize uh, some of the terms. Uh, the other issue related to what uh, Dr. Maryam said, uh, I remember the nomin of nominus. Uh, of, uh, by Abdullah uh, Talib Donald. So he lived uh, with uh, Mura, which is a tribe uh, in the region in the 60s. Uh, when he asked the people, oh, are you Bedouin? They said, we are the Bedouin of the Bedouin. So we need to say that the Bedouins are not all at the same level. You cannot say that we have a society made up by Bedouin and uh, others who are living uh, in the coast. And so you spoke uh, when you talked about uh, historical and cultural uh, factors. Uh, you said that Oh, you said that there was no problem uh, with regard to uh, uh, diversity, but then you said uh, that uh, this uh, leads to uh, deep uh, divisions. Uh, the other issue, whether we have uh, one identity or different uh, identities, uh, for example, Qatar has different uh, festivals uh, for different uh, uh, activities. Uh, so the uh, activities uh, conducted there and organized there gives us the impression that uh, we have different uh, identities. Uh, and if uh, a museum is reflecting only one identity, I think this is a problem. Dr. Mbarak, regarding dismantling the tribe. What is the meaning? Do we, do we want to dismantle the tribe or is the state uh, is aiming at dismantling the social uh, power? Why we look at it uh, as uh, a competitor in society and then they can classify it as they want. The same happened uh, in uh, Egypt at the era of uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser, also in Libya with Gaddafi. Today they had uh, also a tribal society. It was then uh, restructured according to their own vision. Amal Hamami from Tunisia. My uh, question is for Mr. Kandri. Thank you for this research. But it's clear that we are researchers in social sciences. We don't just uh, uh, 
take the statistics as they are for the woman how does she uh, define herself is she more uh, uh, her identity is it national more than uh, uh, religious uh, so we are a rational uh, uh, creatures and all our decisions are uh, so the uh, woman is uh, defines herself with the valuable of the uh, national identity she will get more uh, rights more than her role in the tribe or the religious uh, scheme and I wanted to ask I think uh, you put uh, that on a software and in the economic model the uh, values you used like religion or Islamic religion or tribe uh, there are links between them and uh, the results might not be precise so I would like to see the model you have used as for uh, Dr. Amariam thank you for the study and I noticed that we are dealing with the identity as if it was a, a solid entity and it's and that and in fact, in societies, as researchers, we have to uh, shape the identity, whether it is a research identity. So what is the role of the uh, Qatar researchers in uh, shaping the identity? I would like to uh, draw your attention on the possibility to attend the exhibition in the uh, downstairs floor uh, Mr. Kendari a question about museums in the 70s it was politicized are they still politicized yes they are until now And uh, the desire or of uh, reducing the history or focusing in one identity proves the politicization and that uh, the uh, uh, museum corporation has a, a, a determined policy. And as I said, opening the uh, museums in the Gulf in the 70s uh, they were the uh, among the first ones in the world which are called national museums which want to show or to vehicle uh, a special idea or image and uh, that the museums are scientific institutions and what they say are uh, uh, true and uh, facts so if the National Museum will uh, uh, exclude all other identities and focus on only one uh, identity as the basis of the Qatar so this means that the f future uh, generations will take this as a, a reality and we will have another uh, problematic uh, uh, about uh, uh, tension in uh, uh, between the other components of their society therefore there were uh, a conflict between the way identity should be presented and the uh, museum uh, w w was delayed, opening of the museum was delayed because of this uh, uh, difference, dif these differences uh, politicizing uh, the museum cannot be only uh, negative uh, 
The first uh, museum was the Islamic, uh, uh, Qatari Islamic Museum, and there was a debate about uh, and questions. The uh, Islamic uh, Museum uh, was about the Father Emir, and where the Islamic uh, world was under attack by terrorists uh, uh, or that we were uh, described as uh, terrorists and uh, uh, so the idea of the Father Emir was to uh, uh, make uh, promote the uh, Islamic civilization and that uh, it had uh, uh, cultural and artistic interests this was a, p a positive use of uh, the Islam Islamization or uh, politization of uh, the museums. Divisions, deep divisions, is the difference in the uh, cultural heritage. for the uh, uh, Bedouins and for the, we cannot mix uh, the two heritages and we cannot deny them. Katara uh, shows the diversity of uh, uh, culture The specialists will find out that this uh, museum doesn't uh, reflect uh, facts, but has a political uh, agenda. And uh, what we uh, uh, are worried for is that uh, the last 12 years or less, I would like to uh, answer uh, many questions in one way about uh, the uh, individual uh, identities. You are right in saying that. And the reason for that is that there is a political awareness to uh, benefit from uh, the uh, tribe in order to achieve uh, political goals. And the state failed into uh, defining one uh, social identity. Uh, if uh, two people uh, apply for a job and the one who are less qualified and less competent is chosen, this is not a good thing. This will encourage people to go to their uh, tribe because it's the tribe who allowed him. We have a problem in Kuwait. Most of the appointments or the nominations are uh, based on uh, <coughs> tribal basis. Therefore, we have more and more problems. If I am Kandiri, I go to my tribal, and he can uh, appoint me. And what my state wasn't able to recognize my competency and uh, give me the job. Therefore, the individual or uh, partial identities uh, were consolidated. That is what I meant by the failure of the state. Uh, for the uh, uh, statistics, if you implement it two years, uh, we we will, uh, I'm sure that we will be uh, an increase in the uh, categories. 
for the terms, the uh, we are not able to de to define. Everybody uh, know, thinks that it is easy to de determine or to define the family because it is the family of uh, two uh, 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 elements and the. Uh, so, so there are procedural uh, definitions for the in the Gulf identity. This is a psychological uh, criteria or standard to complete a, a sentence missing a part of it. So you give him a, a sentence and you ask miss something missing in it and you ask them to there are some who said that I am a Gulf citizen or Gulf identity. Some of them said I am, uh, some people say I am Arab and it is a very low proportion. The three ones I mentioned as I explained it in uh, my presentation. I agree that the woman is more aware uh, from the national point of view than uh, the man. I'm not a politician. So many uh, people The way she deals with the institutions of the country is more than the tribe. I, I think more, most of the questions were about the concept. Uh, microphone, microphone. I might have mentioned them partially, but the study uh, is based on a, a procedural uh, aspect and many terms need to be defined. Therefore, the objective I based uh, on it, my study is the capacity of the tribe to uh, influence the society. Uh, the society in Oman uh, used various uh, uh, doctrines uh, like the Islamic brother, Muslim brothers and sometimes it w there was also the military approach. So this was discussed uh, uh, since 2011 and even before. So we might need a parliamentary uh, regime with a, a constitutional monarchy. For the uh, social uh, uh, forces, is it uh, a dismantling of uh, the tribe system or the society system? I don't think it is based on this wish or the will of the state. The state d d didn't say that we are going to dismantle the tribe, but it uh, launched uh, uh, slogans and uh, I suppose that uh, these slogans, uh, its objective uh, was to reduce the influence, but there is no doubt that the tribe is still uh, present and uh, 
the councils which are uh, formed have this uh, uh, tribal dimension and it is sure that uh, uh, facing or defying uh, the uh, tribal system directly will create a lot of problems Dr. Khaled, I think that we might need a long discussions about what is the alternative to this reading, and this is linked to our evaluation of the tribe in the social context. I think that the most important uh, uh, approach is through the uh, political institutions in the uh, country, in the state, like uh, legislations uh, and other domains. So there is something wrong and uh, facing this uh, uh, deregulation might, might be different also. Thank you for... I think it's time for lunch. Thank you very much.